One of the most important things in the flavor of coffee is the roast level. So how light, medium, or dark it is. Today, what we're gonna do is explore three different roast profiles and see all the different flavors that you can get out of a coffee using different techniques on the stronghold. So let's go and check it out. We are going to do a uh, light roast. The reason that we like doing light roasts is it really expresses the, the true taste of the coffee. Um, you have very little impact from roast flavors such as caramels, sugars, any sort of chocolatey or really dark notes. And you really get to taste like fruitiness, florality, and all the hard work that the producers went, uh, put into those coffees. So for me, they're some of my favorite coffees. And I think that the Stronghold does a really good job expressing this style of coffee. So I have here 600 grams of uh, naturally processed Java. It is from Bolivia, from the Rodriguez family. It's super fruity. It has some florals. And I think it's a great coffee for a light roast. So I have my internal temperature set to 365. I like pretty hot charges for this batch size. And then for my other settings, I have nine hot air, nine halogen, three and a half drum, and seven agitation. So let's get started. So when I first start off, the biggest thing I'm looking for is just making sure that this roast is going to track the way I want it to. With the preheat settings on the strongholds, you have very good batch to batch consistency, but if you're roasting a new coffee, as we are right now, I wanna make sure that those initial settings are set up really, really well. So this is the part of the roast where I'm watching just to see how things turn around, where that um, turning point is. If it's either later or earlier than I expect, then I'll start to adjust now. Now is the time to really set up your momentum for the roast so that later on, the decisions you make around either adding or removing heat aren't, don't have anything to do with trying to speed up or slow down, but they're just focused on making sure that the coffee tastes delicious. So right now I can see that my turnaround is gonna be a little bit later. My, my IR probe, ROR, is a little bit lower. So I'm gonna just gently increase the heat just a little bit. I'm gonna go to nine and a half. I'm also gonna hold my drum heater. It's at three and a half right now. I'm gonna hold it a bit longer just to make sure that I have a lot of nice heat in that drum to make sure I have a good momentum coming to the roast. Especially for light roasts, we wanna be make sure that that uh, halogen heat is applied really well. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on how the coffee changes color because once it starts to brown, I'm gonna really reduce the halogen to make sure that we preserve all the delicate notes in this coffee. If we were doing a darker roast, the halogen can actually help introduce some of those dark roast notes that people really like. But because this is a light roast, I'm just gonna use the halogen to, at the initial start of this roast to help with drying, to help with super even bean development and just get the roast started really nicely. Even that one small little change has put us right on track. So things are looking really good right now. Also for a light roast, I'll start stop stepping down my drum heater earlier on. Just because for light roast, I like using the air component of the Stronghold Roaster more than some of the conductive heat sources. So by stepping down my drum heater early on, I'll make sure that at the end of the roast, all of the flavor that we develop in the beans is mostly coming from air rather than from conductive sources. Again, when we do darker roast coffees, I'm gonna use more conduction. I'm gonna keep that drum heater on and hotter for a longer period of time. We're gonna start stepping down the halogen just a bit from nine to seven. This is just bring us gently into the browning stage of coffee with a little bit of halogen, but not too much. I'm gonna step the drum heater down again. I'm gonna take the halogen from seven to five. This is just to make sure that we don't take it out too abruptly. A big abrupt change in any of these settings can really swing the heat and, and bid, put big swings in your ROR. By having these small changes, it sets us up with a really smooth roast with gradual transitions between different phases. The coffee's gone from green, it's now a light yellow, so we're not fully dry yet, but pretty soon we'll enter that caramelization and Maillard phase, and that's when I'm gonna really start stepping down the, the, thir um, the halogen. Taking the halogen to three now. And the last time I'm gonna take the halogen down, I'm gonna go from three to zero. And that's when I see that the coffee is really starting to go through my air. So right now it's like a light caramel color. So it's still not gonna get any roast flavors from the halogen. It's just getting great development from that heat source. My hot air temperature is pretty high right now. I'm gonna start stepping it down really gradually too, just because I wanna make sure that I don't have too much heat in the drum when I go into first crack. 
With light roast coffees, I want to make sure I have a really healthy and vigorous first crack because my development time is not going to be that long. So I want to make sure everything's cracking at almost the same time so I have very even development. If this was a longer roast, it would be okay if that crack was stretched out because everything's going to sort of balance out with time. But because we're going to have a short amount of development time, you want to make sure you have a strong, energetic first crack. We have a light brown now, so I'm going to take that halogen completely off. This way we've maximized the use of halogen where it's able to really penetrate the bean surface and give us good development, but we have introduced no roasty flavors through that heat source. You can see now my environment temperature has plateaued, it's starting to come down. So it's basically gonna meet up at first crack with a, a gently declining environment temperature with that, with that bean temperature as well. As I enter first crack, I'm gonna be watching my RRRs on my, um, my bean surface temperature. I'm at just below six. That's kind of where I want to be headed into first crack for a really vigorous first crack, between about six and seven. I can hear first crack, so I'm gonna mark it here. And then I'm gonna keep carefully watch my rates. I want to make sure they don't descend too quickly. If they descend too quickly, I actually will apply a little bit of heat just to keep energy in the drum. But right now you can see I'm at mid fives. It's looking really good. And I'm just gonna keep an eye on both of my RRRs to make sure it's not descending too much. Because for light roast coffees, we want vigorous first crack, lots of energy, lots of nice heats to make sure that we bring out the most florality and intensity for a short amount of development time. Rates have dipped a little bit. We're now just below five. That's still looking really good. I can still hear the crack rolling. They sound healthy. It's starting to come back up a little bit, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot arrow. That's just to prevent any roasty flavors that could come from a tip up or an aggressive increase in heat. We're gonna drop the roast in just a second here, so about a minute 20 development time, and this will give us a great light roast coffee. You'll notice there's still a few pops in the tray. That's kind of where you want to be for light roast, and I can't wait to taste this.